Hey guys, today it's Kerry, and in this video we're going to be starting our last project of the semester, which will be the Diffuse the Bomb game. So I wanted to just show you briefly what the game is going to look like. So we built the game last year, and basically you take guesses for the numbers, and it looks like I've got two in the right spot, but the other three were wrong. So now I can try a new guess. Oh, no, I don't want to lose. Uh, and you basically keep taking guesses. Oh, I've got two twos, one at the beginning, one at the end. Okay. Um, all right, well, you keep hitting guesses, basically, uh, and either time runs out and the bomb explodes, or you get the combination correct and you defuse the bomb and you win the game. So this is what we're going to be building, and today we're just going to focus on building the user interface, what the user sees. And then in a future video, we'll add the functionality. So let me get rid of the old game. I took a screenshot of the uh, interface that we're going to be building. The one change from last year is that I did get rid of the zero button. And the reason why is the zero button basically complicated the style because it had to be centered. Um, if you want to, you can try to figure out how to add back in the zero button. But that would be your choice and just something that I would recommend doing at the very end of the project, not at the beginning. If you have like extra time or something. All right, so let's start to build a uh, the user interface. So I'm going to make an HTML, CSS, and JavaScript project called Diffuse the Bomb 2023, I guess. Feels weird to say 2023 already. All right, let's create a new REPL. OK, I'm going to zoom in a little bit so that you can see the coding better. I'm going to open this up in a new tab. Okay, cool. All right, this is looking good. All right, so right now I've got that junk on my website, hello world, and this button, badge thing. So to delete the badge, you delete all the way up to line 13. And then to delete the hello world, you delete this. I see a lot of people in the last couple of projects have been deleting the script tag. Please leave the script tag because that's the thing that links your JavaScript file to the, to the HTML file so the JavaScript will actually run. All right, so now my web page has nothing on it, which is awesome. But I want these things on it. So let's start by adding some HTML. So it looks to me like all of the web page is inside of a small little section, uh, which even though it's, it's like black background too, it blends in with the back of the web page, um, it allows us to kind of move the website as like a whole little mini app. So I'm going to create a div to contain the entire website. And this div is going to have a class of content. And everything on my website is going to be inside of that. And then I can move this div around to move the entire uh, group of elements here. I'm going to have an h1 that says diffuse the bomb. I'll have an h2 that says a web app. By Carrie, but you should say your name because you built it. An H3 that has the time, so uh, it's going to be 00. Dot dot six zero. Uh, and that, I think, is the beginning information. Now it looks like I've got another group of things, which will be um, like the, the like passcode as I type these in. It's going to register them here, here, and here. So I'm going to call, I'm going to create another div because we've got this package of blue items. And I'm going to give that a class of uh, passcode. I might change that class. I'm not sure, but we'll see. And inside of that, I'm going to have four paragraphs. Uh, and each of these paragraphs is going to have a class of number, because uh, these are all like the number. I mean, maybe I'm going to change this one from passcode to numbers because it's just the group of numbers. I think I'm going to use passcode as a variable later on for the correct password. All right, so I've got the passcode and I want them all to start off with zero inside of them. So I'm going to put a zero inside of this one and I'm going to copy and paste this paragraph here, here, and here. So I've got four numbers in my combination. Next up, uh, Within, everything is within this content div. You can see that the content div starts here and ends here. 
sorry. So still within that, I'm going to create another div. And this one is going to be this group of items right here, the keypad. So I'll give this one a class of keypad. And I could make these buttons. Um, but I feel like it might be easier if I just make them paragraphs. And the reason why I'm thinking that is you can make anything clickable with an event listener. So if this is a paragraph, I can make it a clickable paragraph. Uh, and the reason why I'm going to avoid buttons is buttons come with so many default styles that I feel like it will be, I'll have to like take off all of the bad styles from the button. Paragraphs are a little bit simpler. So I think I'll start these off as paragraphs too. And I'll give these a class of, uh, because these are like keys that I can push or yeah that's fine and I'm gonna have nine of these all right so I think that's everything that I have on my web page um, Let's see how it looks with just HTML. Blah! It's hard to imagine that this amazing app right here is actually just created by styling this. So let's get started on the styling. All right, so usually uh, whenever I start to style a web page, I begin by deleting the starter text. So give it one second. I hope it's only one second. Um, There we go. I'll start by deleting the starter text. And then the, basically, like we've talked about this a little bit before, but there's two ways to style these borders. You can create the size of the element and then put the border on the outside. Or you can create the size of the element and then put the border on the inside of the edge. And I like to always put it on the inside of the edge. So I'm going to start off by saying to select every element on my page using the asterisk symbol, shift eight. And I want them all to be styled using um, box sizing inline box, or sorry, box sizing. Oh my God, I'm forgetting the name. Whoa, box sizing. Border box, there we go, sorry, box sizing border box. It's pretty early in the morning. I haven't had my first cup of coffee, so, okay. So basically now all the borders are gonna be uh, styled by putting the border inside of the elements. So box sizing border box. I also want all of the elements on my web page to have a white font. So I'm gonna put color white here because I'm gonna have a black background or a blue background and the white letters will stand out better. And then lastly, I really, really hate this font. And usually we use Google fonts, and I recommend you do. But just to be quick in the video, uh, there's a built-in font for every computer. And so I'm going to just use that one so I don't have to go through the trouble of importing the font in like we usually do. And that font is called Sans Serif. And when I refresh this page, uh, well, everything's going to be invisible for a second, but Sans Serif it basically is going to get rid of a lot of the decorative stuff on this text so that it looks simpler. Like the D here has those little tips. Those are called serifs. Sans serifs cuts off those little tips. So if you're into styling or editing for movies, that might be useful to knowledge as well. All right, next up, uh, the body of my web page is going to have to have a background that is black. Let's see how things are looking now. Ooh, we're getting there. Cool, cool, cool. All right. Um, I'm going to want the content of my web page. And I put the dot there because content was not the element type. It was the class. So I'm going to want the content to have a text align center. Cool. Things are looking better already. All right. Next up, uh, it looks like these are my numbers and these are my buttons that are like the keypad. See, I'm going to style those. The numbers had like a 
class of number. So I'm going to do dot number. And I'm going to give them a height of 70 pixels, a width of 70 pixels. That way I get these square boxes. I'm going to put uh, background blue. Um, they already have the white font because of this, giving a white font to everything on the page. We're going to have a border that's uh, maybe one pixel solid white. Uh, it looks like there's a little bit of a rounding here, so that's a border radius, uh, maybe five pixels. All right, let's see how that looks. Okay, that looks pretty close. Uh, it looks like I have to increase the font size and put them in the middle. So to increase the font size, I just do font size. I am not going to be able to get it exactly right because I don't really remember what number that was from a year ago. 24 looks pretty solid, though. And then to put it in the middle vertically, um, there's a lot of ways to do that in CSS. I want to put the zero in the middle of the box. The simplest way that I found is to change it so that the display, I think, I can never remember which one of these I'm going to end up with, but inline grid, I think. And then uh, align items center. And I think that will do it. Sweet. So that did two things. It put the elements, instead of all on their own rows, in line with each other, which is what we want in like the same line next to each other instead of all separate. And by making it a grid, the element itself, it was easily able to put the zero in the center with the align items part. So we have it vertically centered as well as horizontally centered. Cool, cool. All right, things are coming along nicely. Last up is the buttons. So to fix the buttons, I think those are called key. Let me see. Yep, they have a, they're called key because they're keys on the keypad. So anything with a class of key. I'm going to use a lot of the same values from the number one to make it look kind of uniform. So I'm going to make the height 70 pixels, the width 70 pixels, uh, I'm going to give them a border that is uh, 5 pixels, solid gray. I want them to have a completely round border, so this time the border radius is going to be 100%. I want them to probably have the same sized font, 24 pixels. Let's see how things are looking. Okay, looking pretty good. Uh, 5 pixels is a little bit too big, so I can change that down to 4 pixels, or 3 pixels. Uh, 4 pixels it was. All right, so 4 pixels. Uh, and then the last thing that's going to be left is uh, I want these to be kind of aligned in the same way that this one was. So I'm going to use those same tools. I'm going to take display inline grid, and then once I turn it into a grid, I can apply this align items feature to it to within the grid of this item, vertically center the number. Inline is also going to put these all side by side instead of in separate places. So inline and gridded gives us inline all in the same line, and gridded allows us to center the number within the space. So things are looking good. The only thing that's a problem is that it doesn't have the three rows. And so the three rows is pretty easy to do with this design. Basically, our keys are all inside of a div called keypad. So momentarily, I'm just going to take keypad, and I'm going to style it. Oops, I didn't put a style. Sorry, I'm going to style it by giving it a terrible looking background color, like red. And that way, I can see my keypad. All right, so the problem that I'm having, basically, is that my keypad takes up the entire space. If I were to shrink this keypad down so that it could only fit three of these, then I think I would be, then I think the other ones would be forced to form new rows below. So the width of the key was 70 pixels. 70 times three keys would be 210. So I'm going to make the width of this 220 pixels, just a little bit more than 210, uh, to see because I think the borders and the space in between them can add a little bit extra. So that's looking pretty good. Okay. 
Um, I also think I need to do a couple of other things. So I want to start off by centering this. So on the keypad div, to center a div, I'm going to do margin auto. So now the keypad is centered. Now I can get rid of that bad background color because I did everything I wanted with the keypad. So there we go there. The only thing that's weird is that I've got some space in between my elements. So I'm thinking that what I want to do is I want to take my keys and the space between elements, oh, sorry, my keys I already have here. The space between elements is the margin. So I'm going to take the margin on the bottom of it and make it equal to zero pixels. Okay, I also think I might, because it looks like the space in between is a combination of the margin on the bottom and the margin on the top. So I'm also going to make the margin on the top zero pixels. Oop, hold up. There we go. Just took a couple of refreshes. And now we've got a nice looking keypad. Um, and if zero pixels is too tight, maybe that's actually too close. I might change these to one pixel each. Yeah, I think that looks a little bit better, and that way there still is a little bit of a gap in between them. All right, so the only thing that's missing is as a user, these don't feel clickable to me because uh, there's no hover effect or anything showing me that these are clickable. So uh, what I'm going to do is I'm going to say take the keys, and when we hover over them, we should make the background color gray or light gray maybe. I wish I remembered what it looked like. That's gray. This is light gray. Eh. I don't know. Maybe you can find like the right shade of gray by using this drop tab. OK, cool. Oh, wow. I picked the exact one for gray. OK, cool. And usually it will do that. Um, and then also, I'm going to change the cursor. So that instead of having the arrow here, I have uh, the pointer, because the pointer makes me feel like it's uh, actually something clickable. So now I've got this cursor. Instead of the arrow, I've got the hand. And the hand makes me feel like these are clickable buttons. Um, to make them clickable, what you can do is, a student showed me this year, that you can take the key, and instead of adding a hover effect, we might be able to add an active effect on it. Let me just see if this works. This might only work for buttons. This might be the drawback. Um, so I'm going to do transform, translate, uh, two pixels. I'm just going to, I don't really remember if I need a comma there. Crap. Uh, translate x, two pixels, just to test if it's working. Oh, yeah, cool, awesome. All right, so I am going to fix that. So I'll go back to translate two pixels. And I think it's two pixels, comma, two pixels. OK, cool. Now I've got like kind of a button push when I push them. And so what translate does is it translates it two pixels to the right. I'm going to shrink that down to one pixel and one pixel down. So right one, down one. Cool. Uh, all right, so the buttons feel pretty clickable because we have uh, the regular styles like this, the hover styles, and then the, trans the active styles for when they're active, when we've clicked on them. Cool. Um, so this is a pretty complete Diffuse of the Bomb uh, interface. You can make some tweaks of your own, maybe change the background colors up, maybe make things look better, um, maybe add, like uh, I don't know, some background photos or something like that. But um, yeah, we're going to start the JavaScript next class. So I hope you enjoyed building the HTML and CSS because it's been a while since we've done that. Bye, guys.